Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Holy Toledo's who's oh. that handsome devil? Oh. New haircut. I just I remember that fish sound. It was like, oh, go time. <laughs> it's been a while, man. It's been a while. It's been yeah, a hot second, to say the least. Uh, it's Friday Night Flies. Welcome back. It's uh People are wondering where the hell you've been, man. Where you been? I've been in Pemberton. <laughs> Doing other things. Just busy. New uh, new job and all that. Kind of took me away from the river a little bit. But hey, we're back. Why not, right? It's winter time. <laughs> Big fish. Uh, yeah. You still sponsored and stuff? Or does anybody even still watch this thing? I don't think anybody really watches it that much. <laughs> Just us, eh? Just us. <laughs> we're the ones with the thousand views. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, uh, there's, there's a few sponsors still, but uh, as always, Pemberton there. Fish Finder. Yeah, right. Fish We're here we in the beautiful Solares, uh, Spud well, Valley. You your Vice uh, Griffin still with us. Nice. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, Doctor Slick. Still playing with our scissors. Yeah, yeah uh -huh, Doctor uh -huh, Slick. Uh -huh, we love them. Yeah, the list. Is, I just can't remember all of them. There's so it's, many of them. It's growing, oh. fighting for you. Yeah, that's too crazy. But well, anyhow, man, you got a great pattern for. We got some flies. We got some flies to tie. We can shoot shit while we're while we're tying. Uh, we got the frozen tip spay fly. Uh, I called it. Here, I'll, I'll go down there. You can give it a slow spin. Yeah, right. Let's we'll, we'll spin it around. So it's just the frozen tip, uh, not because it was at the hairdressers, unlike myself, but uh, because it is a winter steelhead fly. So you know, your tips and guides get frozen. So that's it. It's a bit of a traditional styled fly mixed in with all them nicely hot colors. And new dubbings that uh, we love to use today. So that's the original, or that's the one we're going to tie. Now there's uh, some expensive feathers in there. We got Rhea going on and this Select Mallard Large. You know, it's not on everybody's budget, so if you want to tone it down a little bit, uh, we do have another version. So I've used uh, Lady Amherst in the bottom and just a saddle hackle on the inside. You know what? It's going to swim. It's still going to catch fish. But this one is the one I'm going to show you. So we might as well get to her, right? And uh, yeah, since it's been a while, I am praying that I don't pull a Scotty Holmes. Hey, Holmes. And break yeah, my thread. Checked in, man. Scott, he's he's, he's checked in. Yeah, nice to see you back, Scotty. He I says. Haven't seen that that guy in a while. Both of him and I have been busy in the restaurants. It is Whistler and winter season. Got to uh, see the old Gene Simmons again in the restaurant this year. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. So I got to. Uh, this time I wasn't in the kitchen. I was on the floor. So I got to serve you know. him and his family. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it was pretty fun. He did a little video in the diner too. Cause we got a bunch of wacky doodle signs out there all right so we got our six aught thread on wound back to the hook point as usual um this is a great way to use up that mallard flank when you start uh, doing like married wings and stuff you'll end up with a bunch um that you have just half a feather left that's all we want spays are pretty sparse uh if you use all on you use the plumes that have have feathers on both sides it's just too much on the fly too too much and you don't get as much movement so I'm going to peel the rest of that off all right so we're left with half a feather I'm going to tie this one in by the tip if I can find it it's in there somewhere and I'm going to make sure that the uh, curve of the feather is going down and away and these are nice long feathers the large select so I'm going to use it to my advantage and tie in the whole bit up the shank because it's just gonna help give me a little girth in there it is a larger fly so we'll just get it in one of my favorite materials uh -huh. I do remember that so I'll just kind of scoop those out of the way a little bit. Next, we're going to put in our rub, our ribbing. So I got uh, silver gold mylar here. I want the silver up, so it means I'm doing gold facing the sky. 
So I'm tying it in silver down so when you wrap over you'll have the correct color. And we're just taking that back to the hook point. Boom. Like that. And we're going to put it in our handy little material keeper here because I am going to be using the rotary and do a little quick dub and loop. Uh, the original fly that I saw this and where this kind of got inspired from, it had a nice um, flat braid in there of purple. I didn't have any of that color. I really wanted that color, so I'm doing a dubbing loop instead. And I'm using some laser dub in the color of my choice, which is this nice hot purple color. And because I don't really want this, the purpose of this one is not to uh, to really bulk it up. I still want that back end to be thin profiled. I'm going to really put it in there pretty sparsely, but when you spin it up, you're going to get the color that you want. Bingo, bango. A little bit more. Give it a little whirl. If you don't have one of these ones, whoo, invest. There we go. And so I'm just going to go through and kind of even it off and pluck out those random hairs. Again, I'm not really doing the dubbing loop to make it buggy. All right, so that's set up. And we've taken our thread to about one third up the hook. I'm just going to put a little knot in there. Get my little cradle going, and I just broke my dubbing loop. Spun it a little too much, but that's okay. We'll hang on. Yeah, we got her. It's a nice thing with the rotary. We're just going to put this color fill in. So I know we are all anticipating the steelhead to be coming up. I know I'm looking forward to it. Mostly because there's not as many people on the river. Or at least there used not to be. Depends on where you go. That's true. Alright, so we got our color up. Again, I'm just going to do a little half hitch. Boom. And put my bobbin in my holder. Grab my mylar and I want to do pretty open loops I don't want to completely get rid of that purple in there so it's just a nice little hit a couple turns to lock it in fold it back on itself done now per usual I forgot my hackle pliers which seems to be something that I love doing for Friday Night Flies episodes Remember everything else, but but it's all right. Nah, we'll make her. We'll make her happen. So, depending on how this feather wants to lie, I might counter wrap. Yep, because it's lying on its back. I guess the last feather I tied in, I took the feathers off this side, so no biggie. Um, the important part is that the outside of that feather, the uh, the good side. Is on the last fly tie. <laughs> is on the last fly tie. No, is uh, facing back so that the natural curve of these feathers flows towards the back of the fly. All right, you don't want everything. No, you can see I'm just manipulating it a little bit to make sure it's lying there. <laughs> Counter wrapping, no big deal. There we go. So we counter wrap that up. You can see those fibers are laying nicely towards the black, the black, the back. Apparently, in my absence, I've stumbled upon a speech impediment. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. It's been almost two years, I think. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, so we got that on there. I'm just going to get that cradle out. I'm going to really lock this down. I don't want that was, uh, was nice. Right on top. I, was digging uh, the I got her in, just like that. No, so, they're different on top when you're looking for them. 
I'm just going to use my handy toothbrush, brush this stuff out a little bit. Just beauty. Look at that, she's flowing. So that is going to give a lot of nice movement to this fly. Um, next is a little bit of silver <clears throat> pheasant in the hot orange. So that's that sexy feather. The one that we never know what to use for. We're going to use it today. Hell yeah. Alright, so I'm going to tie this guy in. Um, the beautiful side of the feather here is facing me. Lock that in. Couple turns. Get rid of this tag. Grab these nice hackle pliers. Pick her up at the end. Bingo. I'm gonna try and brush these down and back. There we go. So that they are lining up with my fly. I'm looking good. Come on, fingers cooperate. There we go. Get off that hump. It's not a very big feather, but that's going to give us a nice little orange hit in there. It only takes a few wraps. Don't try and put more than you need to in. A couple locking, locking turns. Get rid of this tag. couple turns to clean it up there we go I like taking my brush again and just kind of melt that in with all that bronze mallard or that natural mallard there what it also does is it breaks up the natural velcro that the feathers have so you get a little bit more individual strands going there we go yeah, we got some purple we got some white one of the reasons why I picked this fly as well to fish is because of the white. And uh, we are a fan of the famous Spud Valley Muddler Minnow. Moto. Moto Minnow. Thank We've you. We've had a lot of different variations of that fly. Hundreds. I have one box and it's just I've been, all motos. I've been, like, been that's, dabbling with that one. That's all that it is. <laughs> yeah, it's just got to keep it simple, man. Sparse and simple. Alright, so we got that little collar hit in, or what I like to call the throat collar. And then I'm going to the expensive stuff now, hitting up some Rhea. I'm going to put some of this dark blue on the bottom. I want the longer fibers. I don't know, I got probably eight or so here. Nip them off right on the stem. I love this stuff, it just flows so nicely. Now, I want. I'm going to make the bottom longer than the white. It's dark, so I'm sticking back probably about a, a, the hook gap back with some of those longer feathers. So I'm just going to invert my fly, put them on the bottom, one nice catching loop. Just make sure everything's kind of staying up top. Use my thumb a little just to spread them out. A couple nice turns. See if we can pick up all these tags, nip them off, tighten that in. Man, there's a lot of new, a lot of old faces are in watching tonight, man. Picked a good night. I didn't even uh, send out the blast either that yeah, I was going to be John here. John James in there. John right James, on. huge fan. Oh, John James. Yeah. I haven't heard that name in a while. How you doing, bud? Brian Travis, new, new fan. All right, so we got the blue in. I'm going to put a little bit of a red head in here because I want that top wing to uh, just get posted up just a bit so it doesn't completely collapse. So I'm going back to that nice laser dub that Friday Night Flies is such a fan of. I'm just going to put in just a little bit of a dubbing here because we only have two more ingredients to put on. I'm going to put a little bit more a little bit more rhea on the top and then our two grizzly hackles on the side. So this is going to also help me uh, get to the nose of the hook. Nice and tight wraps. There we go. Beauty. I'm liking that. Now we're going to this bright purple here. So we're going to have a little bit of contrast. 
Now the top I'm going to make a little shorter so that I'm able to use up some of these shorter fibers on the Rhea. Lauren's even watching tonight, man. Who? I, I have to say, hi, hon. I love you. Lauren. Oh. Nice to see you're actually watching one of your dad's shows. Uh -huh. Must be a boring night at work. <laughs> oh. Not a show you want to get fired over. <laughs> So the, <laughs> the nice uh, pink here, we're going to make it so that it's tapering off our fly. No, it's, it's about the same length as our mallard. A couple <laughs> nice turns. Give it a little splay with your thumb, tighten her in. Give one underneath with the hay. Post those up. Let's get rid of these tags. Okay, last but not least, no, you could add one more thing and add some jungle cock eyes to it. Um, I couldn't find it in my in my containers. Yeah, um, I know I got it somewhere. Pixlers, uh, checking in from Huntington Beach, California, man. Hopefully, it's uh, a whole lot nicer weather down there. All right, so this grizzly when you put it on. Before you lock it in, you want to make sure that it's sitting right, so just give it one loop over. You don't want the feather rolling sideways. Um, the one that you do right in front of you usually goes on pretty well. This one's a little more difficult because as you wrap over it, it really wants to twist. So, because uh, when you're doing the one in front of you, you're getting a real lock down or a straight down on that thread. So if you turn it over and face it towards yourself, match up my tips and tie this one on upside down let's see when I flop it over it stayed nice and true and before we really lock it we can just position these guys however you like tips match good to go alright we're gonna do <coughs> some nice tight turns on those guys And I'm just going to pull them back and get rid of these tags. Uh, yep. Don't cut off the part you just tied in. That's always fun. Let's just check this one. She's moved a little. Let's get her sitting pretty. There we go. And don't pull too tight or you will... Pull that feather. Get them where you want them. Clean it up. So if you don't have jungle cock, that's a finished fly. John just threw me a couple here. Nice. Hell yeah. Woo. Get them in there, bud. Woo. So this yeah. isn't a big fly, so we're going to take some smaller ones. We'll leave the big ones for his... These nice big ties. Oh, that stuff's so sexy. I think I've only got three or four of them left. I gotta start hunting for more. <laughs> Too bad we don't have jungle cock around here. I wouldn't be you know that. Time to start raising them. <laughs> <laughs> Turn that chicken barn into a jungle cock barn. And same thing with those, like with the grizzly hackle. You wanna make sure those are nice and square on there. This one wants to roll because I was creating a head. Oh, get on there, you son of a... There's some uh, nifty tricks to putting that shit in. Super glue? I don't I don't pull the fibers off. Oh, uh, you leave all that down in? Yeah, because it helps secure it. Yeah, that makes sense. Just throw that feather away, get a new one. <laughs> <laughs> it's cheap, man. Get yeah. another one. <laughs> yeah, just grab like a handful of whatever you don't use, just leave them on the counter, I'll take care of them later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised you didn't walk by with the dust buster. And just, <laughs> <zoop>. <laughs> just suck that thing right up. Alright, so you got those in. Moody. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Sure changes to look at that fly, doesn't it? Doesn't it ever, eh? It adds yeah. some pizzazz to it. It's 
That's the one feather that made everybody fall in love with the spay fly. It's yeah. not the fish it catches. That and probably. <laughs> yeah, that and probably hair. I'm a lunatic for hair. It's crazy how it makes less. Good. Another great substitute is uh, blue-eared pheasant. I've got a full cape of that too, but that, that's a rarity too. Well, folks. And if you're so inclined, you can use your solar res. I can't touch the stuff anymore. That's also why I stopped tying for a little bit. It bothers people. Some of Ooh, it. It bothered me. Yeah, you had some like you anaphylactic had shock. Did it really? Yeah. It got you. Yeah. yeah I find I get kind of wheezy after. Like you had like epipen kind of going on. I have an epipen now. Get out of here. Yep. Well, wow, that's scary. Yeah, because yeah, you know what? I remember the first time it got on you, your eyes got all puffy. Yeah. And then the next time was even worse. And what? My whole face, it looked like I had fought uh, Mike Tyson oh. and lost big time. And how long did it stay like that for? For two days. It took two days for all that, for all that. Oh my God. Hospital. Just getting pumped full of uh, whatever they pump you full of. And then did, did it happen again? Uh, yeah, because I didn't stay away from the solar oh, res. God. Is, does it work with all of them or just the bone dry? It's just the bone dry. Yeah. Something. The other one, the other ones seem to be okay. I'm still, like, kind of afraid of them. <laughs> gotta put the They're still there on my, like, I haven't even touched them. They're still on my vice Gotta here. put the, the respirator on to see the stuff. <laughs> rubber gloves. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, rubber gloves. I think it was the, it's the oils that are in it. Or whatever. It's, I don't think it was the fumes, but yeah, you got to be careful with that shit. So that be. I don't know what that side looks like. That be your fly, folks. That's a good looking fly. Oh yeah, that is a really. I want to go swing that. Let's You're going go. to the river tomorrow, eh? Give her an next go, man. Let's have a good look at that fly. Man, that is dead sexy. Dum 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 dum. It's going to have a lot of movement, very slim profile, so clear water, not great for the murky stuff. Let's get some fish chomping. Okay, let's go. All right, go. take it up. So I don't know if you remember this face. I'm Scott at the Friday Night Flies. <laughs> I used to say love the tug. I'm still going to say it. So love the tug. Thanks for watching. Come again next week.